Hello, angels around everyone. Again, this is Teacher Kimi Pija, and tonight, uh, medyo, medyo masipag ako. That's why we are going to proceed with discussing one of the most exciting topics in, uh, in PR1, the types of qualitative research. This is already the time when you start going to think about the topic that you'd like to discuss in your research. Again, angels around everyone and let's begin so qualitative research again is a type of research that takes into consideration the human understanding the in-depth understanding of the perception the emotion the attitude the feelings of human how they perceive things and uh, what are their attitudes on the any social phenomena phenomenon that they are experiencing. Mostly, qualitative research uh, gives us a glimpse of the subjectivity of social phenomena that each and every one of us, us have different understanding of our society and the social norms, even the conformities or non-conformity to these particular norms. So, let's start with my number the number one so the number one again all of this knowledge is based on the book by esther baracero so uh siguro binibenta ko na siya pero nagustuhan ko kasi siya because uh, it is a uh, very summarized so as we go through uh, most of the cases i will be using the book because this is the only book i have for qualitative research and although i kept on researching by my own so they are just the same and you can find uh, different types of qualitative research in any uh, search and and engine but uh, these things uh, are something that miss esther baraceros has a certain level of mastery she has conducted uh, research about uh, her own research in different libraries about the qualitative research so shout out to you ma'am thank you so much for providing us this book i really appreciate it although uh, most of your activities are something that is of higher level and our students cannot catch up really well so i simplify them for i usually go to simplifying them and try to uh re uh what do you call that recreate some of your activities and create my own activities that directly jives with the purposes with my own teaching aims but thank you so much for providing us the book so let's start with uh case study case study is a long a long time study of a person an organization a group or uh, a sector of the society so usually uh, this is a long time study meaning it has to be not just le in less than one year it has to be conducted for a longer time and it is one of the most rigorous types of research why rigorous it is very flexible type of research qualitative is flexible but rigorous because you will have to really get immersed with uh, the living situations or the uh, the lives of the people of of that particular person and the things surrounding that particular person or or of that particular organization or group or sector with a special or unique characteristic so it's not written in the book that this uh, person organization or group is has its own unique characteristic that is distinct and not the same with the rest of the same kind the same person so for example uh, you want to conduct a study on uh, if you are uh, if you know a person who has uh, who has uh, a disease that is uh, very rare, not diabetes, because diabetes is not very rare. Although if a, a student of mine in GAS or in STEM would uh, uh, ask me if they can actually conduct that uh, type of study, I would say yes. But in, the, in what particular stage of diabetes or uh, having diabetes and all. So it has to be specific. But for example, a very rare disease that only 1 in 100 people will, uh, has or 1 in 1,000 people have. So uh, your study will only revolve around that particular child who has that. And within the region, for example, in the Bicol region, he's the only one who has that particular disease. 
and he is the only one, uh, the only case that is recorded because uh, this family goes to the hospital. So uh, that is a case study, a very good case study. But uh, through the process of conducting your case study, you, only, you do not just get to look at the, uh, the perception, emotion, attitude of uh, the, 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 the person with the disease, but his relationship with, uh, with his family, with significant others, uh, the perception of the doctors, the nurses who are in contact with this particular Mm, person so that is making triang uh, a triangulated data so that you can have a very strong theme supported theme or uh, or uh, that that is how you do thematic approach you do triangulation to make sure that uh, your information or the theme that you have you will come up with is uh, something that uh, everyone can agree with including the people surrounding that particular person with a unique disease and not just about the disease or if an organiz organization is very successful like a successful businessman and all so that is a case study uh, happiness the uh, you saw uh, elderly people who are very happy and some elder or elderly people who seem to not want to go out of their houses, experiencing um, what do you call that? Uh, certain I, I I forgot the terminology when it comes to aging, and you can talk about that. And that is a case study. So case study is rigorous in such a way that it may include uh, you creating questionnaires, questionnaires to the significant others na pasasagutan mo sa significant others. Questionnaires are for quantitative research, but you know, case studies is not just, is not solely a qualitative research. It is a, is primarily considered a qualitative research, but you can actually incorporate um, mixed methodology on it. Um, and of course, the very, uh, why is it um, mostly a qualitative research? Because you also get to analyze documents. For example, the medical abstract of medical abstract yes the medical abstract or the medical records of the person with a very rare disease you get to analyze it and you get to observe the person observation the person either directly or indirectly and um in in interviews conducting interviews directly to the person and to the significant others again that is a case study so usually you pick uh, uh again you have to be aligned alignment ladies and gentlemen it means that your strand uh, should correspond with the topic that you would like to tackle so case study is number one let's go with number two which is the ethnology from the term itself ethnology so you have ethno which means uh, ethnic group a certain uh, cultural group so ethnography um, I'm sorry, that is ethnography, not ethnology. So ethnography is mapping, graphy, the term mapping, uh, graphy, drawing or mapping a cultural group, their internal operations, how they deal within themselves. If you see an ethnic group that is, is it, uh, you look at them. First and foremost, the way they dress. For example, I went to Buscalan and in Sagada, Buscalan, Tinglayan. No, not in Sagada. That is in Tinglayan. Buscalan, Tinglayan in the mountain provinces in the Cordilleras. Mm, I got this tattoo. Look at this. Oh, oh, this is a tattoo called a mountain. So it has to be presented like this. Ouch. So that is a mountain. Uh, a mountain. And uh, it is actually a prayer. Called a prayer. But for me, it also represents a mountain. And these three are the signature of Apo Wang O. This one is done by a certain child named John Ray. Uh, he was um, trained to do pambabatok. So that is culture. Uh, but ethnography is more than uh, that, more than experiencing the culture. It is drawing out the culture. For example, if you want to see um, what are their um, cultural beliefs when it comes to marriage, when it comes to courtship. So you have to be specific also of what you want to tackle. Because if you uh, 
want to really map out the whole uh, tradition or culture of that group, uh, it may take you some time and that would be very, very much difficult. So I would suggest that you start with a specific part of that uh, et ethnic group. So for uh, you also uh, look at the organizational setup or, or the leadership, the political pattern in them. Who, uh, who they respect the most, who, who are they going to ask the permission to do something. Like, uh, usually, we have the elderlies for that, but uh, you may be surprised if you see that most of the elders are being considered as elders are women when it comes to, that is uh, a form of, that is matriarchy or if you want to deal with a feministic behavior of a certain ethnic group that would be very interesting you are not just doing an ethnography but uh, a case study or maybe already a phenomenology that is a breakthrough um, some breakthrough thing that you're going to do a senior high school student okay yun ay kung nakatira ka sa malalayong if you live in a far flung areas with ethnic groups but if you do not live in uh if uh you are part of the ethnic group uh it may become a bias okay listen warning to those parts of the uh, ethnic group it may become a source of uh non-reliability or bias that you are um observing something or dealing with something that you yourselves uh, you yourself you yourselves have already experienced ever since you were younger. So, uh, it is much more appreciated in qualitative research that you are an outsider. Uh, if you are an outsider or new to that particular situation and you get to immerse and uh, experience it on hand, then write it in narratives, how does it happen and all, then create themes and all. Um, also, in ethnography, you may look at the different lifestyle of the people. So in Buscalan, when I get there, I could see that the ecotourism in there was booming. I, if I would like, if I am a student in the University of the Philippines or in in Manila, and I'm taking sociology or anthropology, I would gladly get in there at least and sleep in there all night. Ang sarap dun matulog. It's so cold at night. So, um, and uh talk about their different tattoos and in a place where we stayed there are actually already books on the the tattooed women on the different tattoos and what does it mean so technically they have already written it and that particular uh, those products are the products of qualitative research so if you'd like to do something then uh, try to uh, create a product out of it for example one of the things that un until now none of my students were able to create is um, um, uh, coming up with the local stories in the barangay so what uh, what are the local stories in the barangay? The the folk stories, for example, uh, uh, why is it called Arawis Barangay Rawis? Why is it called Barangay Apod? Things like that, and that is a simple local story. And uh, what else? Uh, like the 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 Uyug system. Like there is an encanto named like this, and. Uh, the stories about uh, the family war in the area, things like that, okay? Let's proceed with the number three, one of my favorites. This is called phenomenology. Phenomenology is actually the lived experiences of the people. You, When you start doing phenomenology, you are going to look at the meaningful experiences as perceived by the people in certain, in where they are at the moment so phenomenology is being conducted by people who who uh, who wants to create change in other people's lives for example if you are a psychologist or a psychiatrist and um you have uh, this couple who would who are having troubles in their um in their relationship 
and uh, you will start uh, doing some therapy, marriage therapy. I, I do not know what you call that. So that is uh, phenomenology. But more than that, I think uh, phenomenology is mm, far, far bigger than that. Uh, lived experiences of certain people, for example, uh, my PVL students in uh, ICT, PVL ICT, particularly they are, uh, they are into CSS, um, CSS, and I told them like uh, they could create like contents or research on the the lived experiences of the um, ICT graduates of. Uh, computer science, BS computer science graduates in the barangay, or the lived experiences of CSS uh, national certificate holders. So those things, so that uh, it is aligned. But the 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 type of research that you are doing is already qualitative research. Then maybe after choosing that, you can move forward into uh, for if you have were able to finish that, then uh, you simply have to change your method when you get into the third SEM or the first SEM of the grade 12 where I, we offer practical research too, supposedly, then they could already continue that. In most schools, kasi what they do is uh, practical research one is being offered in grade 12 first SEM, then second SEM of grade 12, uh, practical research two and three eyes are being uh, done together, so as one. So, for me, that doesn't work. I don't really like it. So, uh, the schedule that I did was the way that I did for specific reasons that Practical Research 1 is different from Practical Research 2. Uh, and Practical Research 2 is technically different from 3 eyes, although <laughs> they are the same. Um, at certain level but in many cases if you're going to ask me I could tell you the whole day why they are different so lived experiences of for example of fishermen the lived experiences of fishermen the lived experiences of the children who are doing the sinsoro or pang aabay in the sinsoro or pang aabay is a form of fishing in in a barangay where I am teaching where students uh, or where uh, children not just children uh, people of all ages would uh, be part of the mm, of the uh, paghihila of uh, pulling the the nets that were thrown into the ocean and uh, um, as they can see the fishes in the nets these nets will this fish would be theirs already but there is a catch uh, catching area in there they call it puso i'm not sure anymore and that would be uh that would be for the owner of the nets but it's like a bayanihan system by which all of the uh people in the community uh would help to get fish in the fishing process and they would also all of them will receive some 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 catch for their own consumption of course so that is lived experiences these are experiences that are not the same with all of people because uh, there are um, since Soro is all um, only being done in certain uh, certain areas and actually I believe that since Soro is uh, is already illegal ah. sure. Okay, let's continue with content and discourse analysis. Content and discourse analysis is studying the, any content or substance of any mode of communications, like uh, uh, books, letters, like a uh, movie, uh, any recorded thing that you can you can listen to, you can watch, you can see, you can read those things you can uh, have sense into documents uh, those things can uh, be um, part of your content and discourse analysis for example in my students against css ict css i let them um, research about videos on the internet on youtube regarding the tutorial that are directly related to their 
uh, practices in CSS, then uh, they will uh, be doing a content and discourse analysis to this, uh, to this uh, videos. Or they will have to look for books or resource materials and they will be doing content and discourse analysis. Now with uh, GAS, with STEM, with Humes, with ABM, there are just countless of uh, resource materials that they could explore even when you are in a gas for example when you are for example in stem and you you saw a movie that discusses like um what do you call this uh scientific a, sci a sci-fi movie a sci-fi movie you would like to uh analyze the content or to do content and discourse analysis of the movie, that would be perfect when uh, it applies like physics, biology, like have you, if, have you watched Lucy? Or recently I have watched The, the Assassins, how, how uh, the, the, the protagonist was being put in a, in a machine called the Animus, if I'm not mistaken, and in that machine, his genetic... Um, genetic uh, memory from his ancestor would be relieved and uh, etc etc there are it's a it's a long story I, I I cannot really spill the plot um, but that is a, a thriller movie on the other hand it has bigger part of it is the is the uh, is a scientific fiction that genetic memory from your ancestor can be restored in the body of the present day human so that is very questionable and something that we get to look into because uh, if you do not know we already have um, things that are impossible before happening right now okay let's continue with a discourse analysis. Discourse analysis is the use of language or the, 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 the use of the patterns of language of communication being used. So that is a discourse. You may look at the discourse and you may see the relationship of people by looking at the discourse. So that is discourse. Content and discourse analysis. Next we have the historical analysis. So historical analysis from the term history, we are just going to look into the uh, history of a certain phenomena, about a certain phenomena that has already happened before, and what are the changes that it has uh, put in the present day. So, uh, that is historical analysis. Mm -mm. The history is the study of the past, and in, just, in historical analysis, all you have to do is relate it to the present, when, or to the future, by the way, how it how the the past has impacted the the present day for example uh my students are being encouraged for example to talk about uh the marcos era in their barangay things like that um what is the what did their experience what are their experiences during the marcos era in their barangay so did they experience uh, those uh things that were experienced by other people in other parts of the country because they are in a far-flung area so are uh, were they reached by the system of the marcuses so it's uh it would be a question that can only be answered through researching through historical analysis now we also have Another example of historical analysis is, for example, the uh, the mangrove forests in uh, barangay in the coastal barangay. So, what is the history of the mangrove forest? Is it uh, like that ever since? Has it been uh, degraded, or it has grown into something much much uh, more lush than before? So, what is the history of that? Uh, mangrove forest even mangrove forest has its own history even our environment has its own history and why is mangrove forest important why why would you like to look into the history of the mangrove forest what is very special so mangrove forest has a lot of ecological services that uh, I could just talk to you about any day but not today um, grounded theory 
is the last one. So, grounded theory, but there are so many uh, things, so many uh, types of qualitative research out there. These things that I am discussing to you, they have subtypes pa. So, marami pa yan. Okay? So, grounded theory is a process when you discover, suddenly discover a theory during your research. The, for example, you are doing a case study, ethnography, or whatever. Then, you, in your mind, of course, uh, you are already using some theories to guide you. Also, you have theoretical background already uh, of how you understand how we, uh, that will guide you and how will you look into the social phenomena. And yet, you discovered another theory that is more applicable, that you think is not the same with the current uh, theory that you are. Uh, dealing with so that is very good that is uh, that becomes your grounded theory and then your grounded theory it, for example in your college days you created in your senior high school I'm sorry your senior high school days you created a grounded theory then you up you in your college days you further conducted a study on it then in your postgraduate then you will be known in the world as someone who is a proponent of that particular theory so that is very good okay I think that's it. Um, I have in here a note and I would let you uh, take a picture of the note. So this is the note. Please take a screenshot. Click. Okay. Thank you so much everyone and may God bless you and always remember, inaandok na ko, angels around. <laughs>